We now induct Jim Hevener to the NC Journalism Hall of Fame. Jim is the owner and CEO of Vilcom. Introducing Jim is Wade Hargrove, a partner in the Brooks Pierce Law Firm. Wade is counsel to some of the nation's largest media companies. He has been named one of the nation's 10 leading media lawyers. He has served as executive director and general counsel of the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters, and he is a member of the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. He recently served as chairman of the Board of Trustees for the University of North Carolina, Wade. President Bowles, Chancellor Falk, Dean King, honorees and distinguished guests, it's a delight to be here tonight. One of Jim Hevner's great friends and broadcast competitors, Don Curtis, once remarked, thank God for Jim Hevner. He's made all of us better. But thank God there's only one of him. <laughs> or he'd put the rest of us out of business. Jim and I have been friends, and I've served as his lawyer for over 40 years. The difference is that Jim has always paid me for my advice but I've never paid him for his. So I've gained more than I've given. The conversations with Jim, as those of you who know him, never end. Just when it appears they're winding down. The words, and furthermore, Wade, <laughs> wind them up again. You're never, never bored talking with Jim Ebner. His passion, his competitiveness, his creativity, his commitment to professional excellence, and his ethic of public service and public stewardship are legendary, both in Chapel Hill, in this community, and in the broadcast profession. With WCHL and later his mastery of the internet for the dissemination of news and information, Jim has redefined the meaning of electronic journalism and public service for local broadcast, local broadcast stations throughout the country. Jim set the bar high, very high for his profession from the time he arrived in Chapel Hill as a student. And he reported for work at WCHO with Sandy McClamrock and Ty Boyd. Ty, great to see you here this evening. A legendary broadcaster in his own right and a member of the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Jim covered the civil rights movement back in the 60s, the speaker ban law, the athletic and academic scandals here at the university, and he never pulled his punches for political or personal expediency. And he set the gold standard for radio sports broadcasting with his pioneering and enormously creative operation for many years of the Tar Heel Sports Network. And for all of these things, all of these contributions to his profession and his community, Jim has received about every professional honor that the broadcast profession can give him. In the 1970s, Jimmy Carter was president. Some of you may remember that. The country was faced with an unprecedented energy crisis with long lines at the gas pump. We were told to use less heat, less gas, less hot water, and to consume a lot less. And the American embassy in Iran was overtaken by, Iran uh, by uh, uh, Iranians, and 60 Americans were held hostage for over a year. A dark malaise hung over the country. Jim at that time was president of the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters. He called me one afternoon to share an idea for uplifting the mood and the spirit of those of us in North Carolina and making us all feel better about who we are and where we live. He created the most massive, extensive, statewide public service campaign North Carolina has ever experienced, which those of you who were here at the time will recall as I like calling North Carolina home. Jim asked me if I would call Governor Hunt and see if we could find some money to hire the most creative people 
in this country to create a series of public service announcements. I called the governor. We went down. Jim persuaded the governor, as he does everybody else, that this was a good thing. And he talked the governor in finding the money, God knows where he found it, somewhere, state government, to hire Chuck Bloor, one of the most creative minds in broadcasting at that time in LA. And he produced the spots. Uh, Chuck came over here, he hung out in North Carolina. He wasn't, had, really had no connection with the state, but he, he came over here, he hung out for a week or so, and he created this song, this jingle. And he interviewed people, and he had real North Carolinians with great North Carolina accents explaining why they like calling North Carolina home. It was just classic. Jim uh, said to me, okay, now that we've got these great spots, how can we get the broadcasters to run them and give up commercial inventory? So he came up with an idea. He asked me to call the governor again. So I called the governor and I said, Governor, Jim's got this idea. If you will throw a reception at the governor's mansion and we'll bring all these broadcasters in from across the state who've never been in the governor's mansion. And when they walk in, if you will hand them those tapes and thank them for running the hell out of them, <laughs> we, will, we will achieve the goal. He did that, Jim was there, and then he brow, he really, literally browbeat every radio and TV manager in the state to run the announcements. They won all kinds of uh, national awards. It was classic Hevner, uniquely creative, timely, and effective, and it lifted our spirits at a time when we really needed it. I should also point out that those of us in the UNC community now enjoy concerts, performances, and lectures and the luxury of the new renovated Memorial Hall on campus, we can thank Jim for pleading with others and raising the private funds to renovate the building and transform Memorial Hall into a first-class performing arts center. It would not have happened without Jim and Pam Hebner. There's really not enough time. I'm a lawyer. I'm, a, I'm, I'm accustomed to the red light going on in court telling me that that's enough. There's really not enough time to summarize all of the contributions that Jim has made to the journalism profession and to this community. Tonight's honor is a fitting tribute to you, Jim, for, from all of us for your stewardship, for your professional excellence, for your integrity, and for your enormous generosity. It's a privilege and honor for us to join in your induction into the North Carolina Journalism Hall of Fame. So in answer to the question about uh, what everybody thought when you first looked at the program, uh, who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> now, for those of you who are true journalists, you know what public figure introduced that slogan into the American lexicon. It's what separates us that we remember that kind of crap, and it separates us from the ordinary, normal, sane people. So I'm here tonight because I am a journalist first. I'm a reporter first. And so I've come here tonight to report the inside story, as we would say, breaking news, Chris. Breaking news uh, with uh, team coverage, Fred, team coverage. <laughs> Team coverage, and we have a hidden camera that was tucked inside the uh, room where the committee met to decide who would be the honorees on this occasion. Now, if you live in Chapel Hill and you're committed to the truth, and the first thing that we have to report is that no matter how many people you're honoring, the most important, the most important outcome of all of these functions is that the university wind up making money on the occasion. <laughs> This is so important that Erskine tonight has come over here to watch the chancellor to make sure this happens, and the chancellor is here to make sure that Dean King doesn't make off with the money. 
so the team was meeting, and they looked over at these luminaries, the slam dunks that everybody knew would be here. And, I mean, look at the luminaries. My God, Walter Hussman. I mean, we've got the people flew in here in his, in his Gulf Stream. And then we've got all these other. And then they looked across the room, and they said, well, we need a really big star. But with, So they, what about Chris Matthews? He came, he came to school. And so Dean King said, oh, yeah, then we could do that. But then they realized that he's a TV star, for God's sakes. And so, you know, they said, oh, well, we'll have to bring him and his handlers down here, fly him first class. We'll have to get a limousine to meet him, and somebody have to take him to dinner, be nice to him, put him up in the presidential suite at the hotel, and that, by God, is going to break the budget. <laughs> There'll be nothing left for the chancellor and Dean King to fight over. So, so they said, well, what should we do to try to get the budget down? And so they had one more choice to make, and Dean King said, know anybody local? <laughs> and, and Farrell Guillory said, uh, well, there's always Hebner. <laughs> If the dinner is free, he'll be here. And so um, I come here uh, as a journalist first, but realizing, Farrell, that it's amazing that we can get, that the school tries to get all of these people together because you realize that the public relations people think all advertising is wasted. And the advertising people don't want the journalism people reporting anything that resembles controversy. And the journalism people are trying to cut through all that crap that comes out of the public relations offices to obfuscate the truth. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. And uh, who I am, uh, I am committed uh, also. Boy, what an evening this has been. I've looked at the little two minute, two minute, two minute thing they have on the schedule thing. And I'm now about, Rick, I'm now about to maybe set a new Atlantic Coast Conference record for having the shortest speech on the program tonight. Because I am committed to truth, justice, and the belief that a meeting should end on the same day that it started. <laughs> and, and on that note, uh, I would say that I am honored to, to be a part of this group. I have been. Uh, lucky enough in business to have it support my uh, journalism habit that started all the way back in high school and was uh, burnished by uh, Ken Byerly in Journalism 101 a long, long time ago. Who remembers uh, Ken Byerly? Jacques Lauderer does that. And uh, Jacques, who started at WCHL when he was, uh, did the high school radio show back there in uh, 1923, I think it was. <laughs> so I am, uh, uh, I am um, truly uh, grateful for uh, being uh, here tonight as a part of this group, but I'm most grateful to the people sitting at the two tables over there and to uh, most uh, creative, loving spouse anyone could ever have and, and, and Pam, and I've got uh, two, Casey and Wendy are here tonight, uh, two, uh, the two of my three daughters, uh, Mary Lou's in Mill Valley, California, couldn't be here tonight, and uh, I mean, blessed with three great daughters, I've got uh, Two uh, grandchildren here tonight, uh, Darcy McFarland, University, just admitted into the honors program, plays soccer here in Grace, and Grace, and Grace Gresset, who is the star of our lives in, 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 uh, in every way. The two of our granddaughters that are representing the six smartest, best, most wonderful grandchildren alive, and I'm <laughs> grateful. And then David is here representing uh, my wonderful sons-in-law. The kids come along, you would think there will be nobody worthy, but David, like the other two brothers-in-law, were the least unworthy of the unworthies. <laughs> and I love them all. I love them all. I love them all uh, like sons. And, uh, and the, the people who are my former colleagues here who are hired, and if you looked at an organizational chart, it would say that they were on my payroll, but they know that I learned more and was inspired more and enriched more by my association with some of the smartest people that I've ever uh, worked with, many of whom have now retired. I can't quite figure out how they do that. And then Ty Boyd, who made it up here from Charlotte tonight, without whom none of this would happen. Ty was my mentor, my boss, who brought it all here. And to those people, I truly am grateful for this occasion, and I am uh, uncharacteristically humble and profoundly grateful.
Congratulations to Jim. Thank you, Wade, for that.